Okay, well, it's nice to be back after 24 hours. <laughs> so I'm enjoying my visit here very much. Um, the sporadic groups, well, I, I, can, I can give a definition fairly easily. Um, uh, uh, I think you know what a finite simple group is. Uh, it is a finite group. Finite group G. Uh, G is not the identity, and the only normal subgroups of G are one and G itself. Okay. So in the uh, any algebraic category, one wants to classify the simple objects. And uh, we have achieved a classification. And um, <clears throat> when did this happen? Well, actually, we're not sure. The, 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 we, this was announced. about, I think, 1981, but not all the proofs were turned in, and some of the proofs were uh, revised, and there were some corrections. So, um, but this, essentially, this is, this is correct. And, and so the, <clears throat> the statement goes, uh, G, uh, simple, finite, group, belongs to uh, one of these families. Uh, one is the alternating groups for n at least five, the groups of um, even permutations on a set of n objects. Uh, two, uh, groups of Lie type And, uh, <clears throat> oh, sorry, over finite fields. And many of them are just direct copies of uh, famous uh, Lie groups. For example, uh, if you have uh, an orthogonal group, n by n matrices over R, just we can just replace these uh, real scalars by a finite field and get a, a finite group. Now this is actually not simple. We would have to take the special orthogonal group and uh, possibly uh, mod uh, scalars. In this case, just order one or two. Okay, so it's easy to imagine many of these, but, but some of them aren't so obvious um, how to construct. For example, the exceptional groups like E8, um, th there's no uh, description, just one or two lines. You, you need to go to a theory of Chevrolet. Uh, gives families a n of q, and this means uh, the cardinality of the finite field. And this refers to a root system. And this refers to the rank of the root system. Uh, roots live in a copy of Euclidean space of dimension n, and uh, 
that n is the rank of the root system. <clears throat> okay, so you can take all the, uh, the, the, the root systems and just do things over finite fields. And then E, 6, 7, and 8. <clears throat> but now there, there's a, a variation of this uh, due to Steinberg. Well, what could this correspond to? Well, if this corresponds to the special linear group, this would correspond to the special unitary group. There's a field automorphism involved. So, um, special unitary uh, dimension n plus 1 uh, over the field, not of q elements, but q squared elements. Okay, so uh, uh, carrying on in this way, we've got um, twisted d4 of q, trially twisted d4 of q, twisted e6 of q. Uh, DL, uh, DL of q. Oh, I beg your pardon, thank you. And also you missed class zero. Class zero. What do you mean? Uh, you, you, it's a billion. Oh, yes. <laughs> Cyclic. I, I always forget that. <laughs> Cyclic of prime order. Thank you. And finally, there's a, there, is a, a, there are three special cases. 2b2 of q, where q is an odd power of 2. The Suzuki groups, twisted g2 of q, where q is an odd power of 3. And twisted f4 of q, Q is an odd power of 2. For n at least uh, 2, n at least 0, I guess, yeah. <clears throat> and actually, I need to put commutator subgroup there. <clears throat> now, these groups uh, don't correspond to Lie groups in characteristic 0. They exist because of special arithmetic properties of finite fields. So uh, my idea of just changing the coefficients here does not explain these groups. OK, but, but it's, it's this analog with the, with the Lie groups uh, is, 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 uh, is captures almost all the cases. OK. And then the. Oh, good question. Uh, N is at least 3. Okay, yeah. Uh, N at least 1. one. Thank you. So 1 plus 2N is at least 3. But yeah. the last one here is getting equal to 0. Uh, yes, that's right. Field of two elements? Yeah, that's okay. And then finally, uh, the third category is these sporadic groups. I promised you a definition of sporadic groups, and these are the ones that are left over. That's the definition. OK. Um, and we have, uh, well. Okay, so five groups to uh, Emile Mathieu from the 1860s. Uh, and they weren't proved rigorously to exist until 
fit gave a proof. This was time when mathematics was much more relaxed and you could pause and think about things without too much pressure. And uh, 21 additional groups uh, discovered during the period 1965 to 1975. Now, discovered means found evidence for the existence, but an existence proof uh, in several of these cases came much later than 1975. Okay. Um, later in some cases. And I should also say their uniqueness Proofs. There's only one simple group with, with certain properties. Okay. Now here with H, actually. I beg your pardon? With an extra H. Doesn't oh, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Okay. Now, uh, so th this is... It, it, the description of the simple objects in the category of finite uh, groups is um, it's actually pretty complicated. To just describe these things in detail would take a very long course, maybe, maybe several of them. <coughs> and uh, the, this dis the discoveries made during this period uh, are explained by uh, the fact that the effort to classify finite simple groups um, started just in the 1950s. There was a serious effort to, uh, to cope with the question and there was very slow progress at the beginning and then uh, things really got moving in the early 1960s. Okay, so let's, let's go to the first. Now, now the, uh, when I say wondering about finite simple group, is there a question? Uh, uh, did Mathieu introduce a single group or, or several of them? Five. Oh, oh sorry, no, this is five. Yes, and I, I believe he introduced, he didn't introduce five at the same time. There were several papers. Um, and I, I have not studied those papers carefully, so I'm not sure what to say. And do these five uh, groups have uh, something in common except their names? Uh, yes. M24 uh, is in the symmetric group of degree 24, and it is five transitive. That means, given any sequence of five symbols in here, and another sequence, then there exists a G in M24, so that G takes uh, AI to BI. So it's highly transitive. And uh, M23, I just reduced the number by one. It's four transitive. M22 is two, sorry, three transitive. And uh, you, you can go one more step, but this is a familiar group. This is PSL3 over the field of four elements acting on the 21 points of the projective plane. So. Um, this is this is doubly transitive, and the other three Matthew groups are M12. This is five transitive on uh, twelve points, and M11 is four transitive. Uh, 
Okay. And there, there are families of. Um, so M11 is the stabilizer of M12 inside. X. Yes, that is, that is true. Yes. Yeah. And uh, M12 is contained in uh, M24, also. So they're they're connected in that sense. And uh, there, there are some, um, uh, I think if we take um, affine general linear group of dimension n over the field of two elements, this is a, a f an infinite family of triply transitive groups. But there are no infinite families of um, four transitive groups or higher, simple a finite, uh, a finite groups. Uh, so these Matthew groups are distinguished by being highly transitive. Okay. So uh, let's uh, let's. What was the motivation to discover these groups? For which groups? Matthew? And Matthew, I th I just think it was a pure problem in permutation groups to Matthew. So. Highly transitive groups. That was yeah, making some kind of multiply transitive groups. I, 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 do, I don't know details. Sorry. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's go to year 1965. So let's pretend that we're young and mathematically young, young children and full of innocence. Um, okay. So th there's growing interest in the classification of finite simple groups, and uh, Zvonimir Yanko announced the existence of a group that's called uh, J1. He, he discovered more than one, but uh, this, this is a simple of order 2 cubed times 3 times 5 times 7 times 11 times 19. And algebraists then wondered, what could it mean? What's the context? Or, or you know, how do you explain it? Well, this was, this was uh, discovered uh, by a study of a centralizer. of involution problem. In other words, um, imagine G is simple and there exists T and G where T has order 2 and uh, the centralizer looks like this. It's a cyclic group of order 2, direct product alternating group of degree 5. Well, a lot of problems like this were considered early in the game, and uh, this led to the discovery of a new simple group. It's quite an amazing thing. But now look at this. This is... Let's see, how do I get this? It's 55 times 56 times 57 and it's 19 times 20 times 21 times 22 <laughs> and it's also 1330 times 11 times 12 which is 11 cubed minus 1 times 11 times 11 plus 1 now you see, people were thinking maybe there's an infinite series of groups. How about how about a series uh, of groups, simple groups, of course, of orders q cubed minus one times q times q plus one. Right? Think of the formula for the order of the general linear group over a finite field or an orthogonal group. 
you've got these polynomial expressions of this sort. Well, it turns out that didn't lead anywhere. Experts shot it down. Um, these are very pleasant looking factorizations. As far as I know, nothing has been made of that. No magical number theory, special combinatorial things. Okay, but it's it was fun to think about. <clears throat> And uh, people were, were really quite excited. And then, not long after that, 1968, that was a really good year. We've got uh, more groups. The second group of Yonko, which it would be more fair to call it the Hall Yonko group. And they, uh, they did publish about the same time and each author referred to the other author's contribution. But somehow J2 is a little easier to write than Hal Yanko. It's, it's, life's not always fair, right? Okay. J3 and then Higman Sims. These are all sporadic groups discovered. 1968 plus or minus a few days or, or weeks maybe. Um, Higman Sims, McLaughlin, and uh, what else? Suzuki sporadic group, uh, Conway groups. These are in connection with the famous Leech lattice in dimension 24. Conway 2, Conway 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so what's the total? Uh, five Matthew groups, one of these, is that 14? I've probably forgotten some, let me check my file here. Uh, okay, I think that's right. And in the year 1969, there are three Fisher groups. Fisher 22, Fisher 23, Fisher 24 prime. Fisher 24 is not simple. The commutator subgroup is simple. And um, the group of held and the group of lions. What have I got now? One, two, three, four, five. We're supposed to get 26. And uh, what happened after that? What was the year? Um, Rudvalis and Onan. Okay, that's 21. And then Fisher, or sorry, um, Um, uh, there's the monster, uh, the group of Thompson, uh, Harada, Norton, <clears throat> two, three, uh, big pardon? So far, it was by years, and now which year are we? 1973. And in 1975, we have another Yanko group. Two, three, four. That's 25. I'm missing one. How embarrassing. Let me see. Um, Oh, sorry, yeah. And uh, the, uh, the baby monster, yeah. Well, how do I write this? Uh, F sub two, Fisher.
Okay, one, two, three, four. Have I got it right? 26, okay. And after 1975, you see, we were still busy trying to get the classification of simple groups, not really knowing if it was going to terminate. And then suddenly the supply of sporadic groups ended, just like that. People were busy working and they didn't find anything more. And why features groups have these indices? Well, that's, that's because they're related to the Matthew groups. Um, Fisher 24 contains a subgroup that looks like uh, an elementary abelian group of order 2 to the 12th extended by Matthew 24. And if I change this to 23, I get 2 to the 11 M23 and so forth. Okay. Elementary, elementary abelian. Elementary abelian two group. In what sense extended is supposed to be simple? It's a subgroup. Oh, it's a subgroup. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yes. I think, I think actually, I think this one is non split, but, but that's. But the Fisher group is much bigger than this subgroup. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, well, I, I won't write the order. Okay, need a new piece of chalk. So, uh, so we uh, seemed to be close to a list and a classification theorem. So this is late 1970s, very late 1970s. And uh, the program went on and as I said, the, the, uh, the end was announced early 1980s and uh, it's been stable uh, it's been checked there's there seems to be uh, it's it seems to be quite solid and uh, it's really long and complicated the the uh, original proofs all put together come to about 10,000 journal pages and that's possibly been cut in to half or maybe even less than that but that's still a lot okay no. There is no abstract theorem you know, which says that the list is finite? No, there is not. There is not. In other words, before you complete the classification, you'd like a theorem that says there are only finitely many sporadics. There's no such result. Okay, so now the question is um, uh, how to place these finite simple groups in mathematics. So if you copy the uh, Lee theory idea, uh, you, can, um, you can say a lot of deep and, and beautiful things about uh, many of these groups on the list, but you don't say general things about the, the sporadic groups. And yet, there, there are some um, interesting theorems that cut across the um, the groups the, the group the family of groups of Lie type and, and the sporadic groups so let me mention uh, one or two of these uh, and one is the classification of Omega transposition groups Uh, 
and these will involve classical groups as well as, as some of the sporadic groups. And, and here's the idea. Uh, let's say G is a finite group generated by D, a conjugacy class of involutions omega is a subset of the set of integers greater than or equal to 3 and uh, the set D uh, satisfies The following. If you take two elements of D, then they commute, or the product of X and Y is an integer in the set omega. Okay. And by the way, when you have two involutions, this is a dihedral group. Two involutions in any group generate a dihedral group. So uh, this number is just uh, one half the order of this dihedral group. Okay. Now let's take an, uh, let's take the first case, omega equals three. And uh, Fisher studied. Uh, such groups G and D uh, where um, has uh, no solvable normal subgroup uh, let's say it has no, non-trivial okay then now you can you can then G is one of and he gave a list a symmetric group and uh, some classical groups Let's just give an example. I don't want to list them all, but for example, if you take an orthogonal group of dimension n over the field of two elements, and D is the class of transvections, uh, a transvection, maybe I, you've got a quadratic form here, and um, take a vector where the quadratic form on V is 1 and then take this linear map this is a, an orthogonal transvection and it is the case that if you have two of them they either commute or their product is order three. That's an exercise in linear algebra. Okay, some classical groups, uh, some bio groups. Or, and this is the big surprise, three new sporadic groups. Let's just think about the symmetric group and, and take the uh, transpositions permutations that interchange symbols I and J. Uh, if we take two of them, let's say this is one and here's another one, KL.
if the set i, j, and k, l avoid each other, then the, the transpositions commute. And if they're intersection, is just a, a one element set, let's say j is equal to k, then x, y is a three cycle. Okay, so this, this condition here uh, is, is really pretty simple to, to check in the case of the symmetric group. It's slightly more of an exercise to check in some of the classic groups. And uh, Fisher tried to classify all groups with that property. And the amazing thing is that you get three that were, had been unknown. It was, it was really quite an achievement. Now, uh, how about uh, other uh, omegas that will give interesting theorems? Uh, one is omega is, uh, is the set consisting of four and all odd numbers. And um, another is... Odd numbers more than four? All odd numbers. And there was a case when, um, so if we do this, we get uh, more groups of Lie type. Including GLN. And um, groups over a field of characteristic two. When, when we get the uh, classical groups here, they're usually over the field of two elements or the field of three elements. But when you expand the set, you, you, you pick up examples of groups over finite fields of characteristic two, not just the prime field. But we also get uh, the hall yanko group which has order 604800 and the Fisher uh, baby monster so you've got this really simple condition hypothesis which was not explored until Fisher did so in, in the 60s and you can pick up some sporadic groups that way okay <clears throat> okay so um, easy the number of conjugacy classes I think not more than three or four, usually, I think. Like E8 has only two. e is not a sporadic group. No, but I'm saying that large groups have also have very small inhibitions. But Well, what kind of large groups do you mean? No, but in 
mean, this is for ready groups, there are only a small number of conjugacy classes of immunosense. Yeah, usually up to three or four, maybe. Okay, now uh, another idea is to study uh, reflections. Uh, now, reflection groups uh, over the real numbers lead to uh, vial groups and uh, a few others. So, if you've had a course in Lie algebra, you would be uh, you would have studied this uh, category of groups. When you go over the complex numbers, of course you, you get these, but you also get um, uh, get a few more uh, classical groups. And when you go over the quaternions, there is a classification by uh, Arya Cohen. We get the above and uh, a, a few more examples, including things like PSU52, double covers of alternating groups, and the Holyenko group. This can be interpreted, actually it's a double cover of the Holyenko group. This can be interpreted as a group generated by a class of quaternionic reflections. Okay, so this keeps, uh, th this has a presence among the fairly classical kinds of mathematics as well as uh, in the world of sporadic groups. Okay, now, Okay. Now, uh, we're still wondering about how these sporadic groups are placed in mathematics. There are a few theorems there to get you started. But uh, a very important um, breakthrough in our thinking came about 1978. And that's the discovery of what is called monstrous moonshine. Uh, and that is this largest simple group, uh, the monster, the largest sporadic group. Uh, the order is 2 to the 46, 3 to the 20, 5 to the 9, 7 to the 6th, 11 squared, 13 cubed, 17, 19, 23, 29, 31, 41, 47, 59, 71, 
That's about 8 times 10 to the 53. And uh, this, was, uh, this was discovered, meaning some evidence was found uh, by Baron Fisher and myself independently. in 1973. So, and, and I did construct it uh, in the early 1980s, but, but it was not known to exist at this point, and we weren't sure that it was the biggest sporadic group. It could have been a small part of a bigger story. We, we just didn't know. But uh, Conway and Norton, John Conway and Simon Norton, Uh, Simon Norton just passed away, by the way. I don't know if you know that. He had a heart attack, I think. Um, found a correspondence between conjugacy class uh, and the monster. and genus zero um, function fields on uh, the upper half plane. And uh, these, these things really correspond to um, discrete groups. Um, essentially uh, SL2Z and uh, related groups, subgroups of this or overgroups of subgroups of this. And uh, the connection, um, I'll explain this uh, connection I'll describe it, but what it did was take this world of sporadic groups, which looked very abstract and disconnected with other mathematics, and it connected it to 19th century number theory. That's, that's another vast world. Okay, and, and it was the following. Um, if we take, um, okay, the monster, uh, has a, a representation theory and uh, irreducibles, irreducible representations have degrees. One, there's always the trivial representation, 196883, and then 212, and I, sorry, I can't remember the rest of the digits. But the numbers get really big, very fast. And uh, John Mackay. How many uh, representations does it have? 194. Mm -hmm. And uh, John Mackay noticed that if you take uh, j of ta, this is the elliptic modular function. If you take this particular discrete group, its invariance, uh, the invariant uh, holomorphic functions on this space um, are rational functions in the symbol J. Okay, that's, that's a theorem. So this elliptic modular function has the following form. Uh, Q inverse, oh, Q is e to the 2 pi i tau. Tau is a complex variable in H. Uh, it's Q inverse plus 744 plus 196 884 Q 
plus 214, and I forget the rest of it, Q squared, plus more numbers. And uh, John Mackay noticed that the sum of these two numbers is equal to that number. That started everything wrong. It's easy to check. I'll give you a minute here. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, John Mackay has a reputation for noticing unusual connections, and uh, quite a few of them are very interesting. And th this one was really, really good. Um, this number is 3 times 248. That's the dimension of the Lie algebra E8. Um, on the other hand, if you just take this and add a constant, you still get a, a function that's invariant under the, uh, this discrete group. So there's no harm in, in adjusting this coefficient. So you could make it zero if you want. Okay, uh, and, and then John Thompson noticed that this number was the sum of this plus this plus the next degree. So why not, why not carry on? Okay, so uh, the coefficients of J seem to be non-negative integer linear combinations of irreducible degrees. for the monster. Okay. Oh, what time did I start? Or how many minutes do I have? Okay, good. Thank you. I have to pause here for a second. Okay, so uh, John Thompson suggested that uh, there exists a graded vector space so that uh, uh, where Vn is a module representation uh, for uh, the monster, complex representation, and the traces of elements may be interesting series. Okay, so in particular, the trace of the identity element should be the J function. Well, maybe, maybe you'll shift the degrees a little bit to avoid negative terms. Maybe modify the constant. Okay, but these are fairly minor adjustments. And uh, Conway and Norton found that this was really true in, in, a, in an extremely detailed manner. Uh, so if you take this, Oh, sorry, if we take SL2Z, this contains the set of matrices A, B, C, D, such that two, oh, such that the determinant is one. And then you make two divide C. That, that's a group. Okay. Uh, this is it's, a, it's another discrete group, and this corresponds to a series. Let's see, how does it start? Start Q inverse plus um, zero plus two seventy six, I think. Anyway, um, I, I'm, I'm afraid I just don't remember many of these examples, but. But there are some standard discrete groups you can write down that are closely related to this. 
and you can write down the series, and then you look at the character table of the monster, and you see that these numbers are really traces on, on modules. So something's going on, and indeed that, uh, that is the case. So, oh, and I, sh I should add that the, uh, correspondence conjugacy classes for the monster and uh, genus zero function fields um, is not a bijection. It's pretty close, but it, it doesn't it's not a bijection. What you have to do is identify two conjugacy classes if elements generate the same cyclic group. If two elements in the monster generate the same cyclic group, they're not necessarily conjugate. It, it, typically they are, but not, all, not always. So um, uh, certain pairs of conjugacy classes and here we don't get all known genus zero function fields. Some of them are just missing. There's, there's nothing in the monster that corresponds to them. And by the way, I don't think we know all the genus zero function fields. Any, correct me if I'm wrong. I think we, we know certain restricted types. Uh, well, the genus zero function fields cons uh, um, correspond to discrete groups. They're not necessarily subgroups of, of SL2, said. They could be normalizers of subgroups. They could involve fractions in the, in the coefficients. So uh, that's, that's one caution here. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a, let's say it's a nearby ejection, maybe that's, that's a good word. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> well, this certainly uh, hints at some context for at least some of the sporadic groups in, uh, in mathematics as a whole, not just within group theory. And uh, the, um, concerning the idea of a graded series, where, where is it here, uh, Frankel, uh, Igor Frankel, I think he's a graduate of this university. Of course, we're yeah. still uh, okay. Frankel, uh, Lepowski, Merman, uh, constructed a, a good rated space. And they, they showed that the traces uh, were right for many conjugacy classes, uh, but not all. They didn't get that. Uh, finally, uh, Richard Borchards did verify the conjecture that the uh, 
that the, uh, the graded traces of elements of the monster do give genus zero um, modular forms. Okay, and furthermore, uh, the Franco Lepowski Merman graded space has the structure of a vertex operator algebra. This was a relatively new algebraic theory. It's developed in the mid-1980s, and uh, it's now quite a big topic in um, representation theory, people who do Lie theory. Lie algebras and similar things are interested in that. <clears throat> the uh, also uh, vertex operator algebras are closely related to affine oops the algebras and the uh, FLM space um, has a copy of the 196884 dimensional non-associative algebra. Uh, used by myself in construction of the monster. Okay, now my construction was done about 1980. And so some years later, it was found to be embedded in this bigger structure vertex operator algebras. So that's been a, a quite, uh, quite an opportunity to connect um, sporadic groups, or at least some of them, to the world of Lie theory. And it come, there's a lot of number theory and combinatorics that, that come up in this representation theory. So that is uh, a pretty good candidate for a context for connecting sporadic groups to the, uh, to the rest of mathematics. <clears throat> Let's see, am I just about finished? Okay. Um, I wanted to say that there are, uh, there's no convincing theory that captures all the sporadic groups because in the monster, we see 20 of the 26 sporadic groups. They are quotients of subgroups and then there are six others, which we call uh, pariahs. They seem to be struggling to be recognized in the same way. There's been some progress on a few fronts, but... Okay, I think that's all for now. So thank you for coming. <laughs>